Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, before I start, I would like to apologize to everybody, especially Nicholas and others who have been commenting about my absence uh, the past few weeks, even though I said I was going to be recording regularly. I've been playing a lot of chess and uh, since the last video, like a few weeks ago, I've played two tournaments and sometimes I feel that I need absolute concentration uh, for, for playing and that any distraction would hinder my ability to concentrate perfectly. Even though that's almost certainly not true, it's, well, it's easier not to do anything else. So I haven't been doing anything else. Anyway, I apologize. Uh, if I'm not recording, the only possible reason could be that I'm playing chess or preparing for a tournament. So I do apologize if it happens again. Anyway, I, I'm starting my next tournament tomorrow. I just arrived to Italy. Uh, next round starts, uh, first round starts tomorrow, 3 p.m. So cross your fingers. I still have a couple of tournaments to cover before that. So it's going to come up in about 30 videos. Anyway, until then, I'm going to be covering the rest of the games. One more answer. Uh, someone or a few, a few of you have asked why I'm not updating the rating in the videos. I actually am. Uh, I'm always putting the rating that I had at the time of playing the game. So when I played this game, my, my rating was 1928. As you're going to see, I did manage to, to gain some points. Okay, uh, let's start with this game. So in this game, I faced an opponent about 100 points high rated. And we played an Italian. And as you may have seen in the round four game from this same tournament, I'd experimented with a variation I've never played before that. So in this position after knight a5, which is the absolute main move, bishop check, c6, d6, b6. So far, I've always played bishop e2 or bishop d3. In round four of this tournament, so a couple of days before this game was played, I'd played queen f3 and I won the game. Uh, I, well, I managed to study enough theory in this crazy Bogolyubov line that I was more prepared, better prepared than my opponent. So I decided to do it again. And uh, my opponent in this game wasn't as prepared, I'm going to say. This is a very tricky line and white wins a pawn, but in exchange black should have uh, attacking compensation in most variations, especially after bishop e2 or bishop d3. By playing queen f3, white manages to complicate the game too much for that to be visible. And one mistake could mean a defeat for either side. And here, the most common move is rook b8, as was played in the previous game by my opponent. Uh, you could also play bishop to e7, that's a very respectable line, against which I think bishop c6 is the best move. You can also play h6, forcing the knight back straight away, that's possible. Uh, queen c7 is possible, simply defending the pawn. Uh, but my opponent in this game played bishop to b7, which is a move, uh, I'm going to be honest, I haven't prepared for or haven't prepared against, because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not unplayable, it doesn't lose straight away, it just gives white full compensation for the pawn. And the reason for that is simple, after bishop to a4, uh, I get to keep the pin and I get to keep the pawn. Most importantly, until black castles, this knight is never getting into play, which is black's bad piece. And black usually wants to play c5 and knight c6, get the knight into play this way. Uh, and usually this bishop remains on the diagonal, putting pressure on the queen. And in some cases, the white queen could, could get trapped because of that. So basically, this bishop isn't doing anything because the pawn is pinned. Uh, this knight isn't doing anything. So, so bishop to b7 is not a good move. Uh, my opponent played bishop to e7 here. Uh, I played knight e4, which is a mistake. Uh, I don't think I have to play knight e4. I wasn't familiar with the position, uh, or I wasn't too familiar with the position. There's basically no reason for me to to break the tension in the center by, by moving my piece. Uh, black isn't really threatening to move the knight anywhere too active, where it could threaten my, my, my g5 knight from. So I should probably just castle and get on with things. But anyway, knight e4. Uh, a bad move, but still, white should be better. 
opponent took, I took, uh, he castled, I castled, uh, and in this position, he, he had a chance to complicate things and to, to well, gain enough activity to almost compensate for the pawn, which is the result of me playing knight e4. He could have played f5 straight away, which I have to be honest, I didn't even consider during the game. It was brought to my attention by a friend during analysis who, who's had a lot of experience with both sides of this. And even though it gives up a pawn, after bishop d6, it's sort of a martial gambit uh, position in which black has given up two pawns instead of one. You could say that the b pawn is irrelevant, especially because this bishop is a monster. And after something like queen e2 and rook e8, uh, I had to turn on the engine for this when I was analyzing because I couldn't figure everything out. The engine gives bishop b3 as the only sensible move for white and after knight b3 of course queen c4 check and black should be equal uh, which I, I I never dreamt that black would be equal in this position he played bishop d6 which again plays for f5 but gives me time to play pawn to d3 and pawn d3 is a very important move why because it prevents e4 it prevents knight c4 and it simply solidifies my position enough. Uh, I, my, my bishop is now active and after d3, basically in these uh, Italian lines with knight a5, white is fine. If white manages to get in d3, then there are no more problems, at least in my experience. And I've been playing these positions since I started playing. So f5. I dropped the queen back to e1. Uh, I, I don't want to allow bishop to, to b4 because I don't want to play c3. I also don't want to run into any tempi with my queen on light squares uh, or on e3 for that matter. And I just want to get as far away from these two moves. c5, good move. Uh, either preparing to bring the knight back and more importantly opening up the bishop. Knight c3. I don't have to be afraid of anything for the moment. Uh, a6. Uh, I couldn't really understand. I think it's a major waste of time, uh, possibly preventing knight b5, but I would never even consider knight b5. Maybe if he plays queen c7, I would go knight b5, but <clears throat> I think it's way more natural to play queen h4 for him in, in any position uh, than, than queen c7, because best case for him, I'm going to lose the h-pawn with check, and he also has to sack the e-pawn to do that. So I, I think a6 is a waste of time, especially given that this bishop may have wanted to come to this diagonal as well. Bishop d2, connecting my major pieces uh, and putting pressure on the knight, more pressure on the knight. So now knight d5, knight d4, uh, bishop to c7 defending, uh, rook d1, putting pressure on the queen, making e4 basically unplayable because I'm going to be able to at least trade the bishops after the queen moves. He plays king h8, and now I play f4. Uh, of course, if I don't play f4, then maybe g5 is coming, followed by rook g8. At least this way, I'm blocking one diagonal. And if he wants to take this, fine. I, I would be thrilled if he took it, uh, because then I get to trade off some pieces. Of course, if I trade off some pieces, I'm clearly better. Rook f6, f5. And in this position he blundered uh, with, with rook to g6. And I'd actually spent a tremendous of amount of time uh, before playing f4 calculating all the possibilities. Even though the, the position seems fairly tame, considering that the two bishops, queen and rook, are able to come pretty soon into the position, there are a lot of ex exact lines that had to be calculated. And I'm going to give you an example. After f4, rook f6, f5, what I was calculating during the game was queen d4 check. And after queen d4, queen e3, bishop takes e5, uh, I go rook d1, defending everything, and he goes rook g6. And this becomes kind of tricky because now, I, and I saw all of this during the game. Uh, I have to play rook f2, he plays f4, attacking my queen, I take on d4, he takes on d4, and I go knight e4. At least he gets the exchange back. I've blocked the diagonal, his knight is attacked, and at this point I, I lost myself completely, I just couldn't see anything anymore. And in, in the analysis after the game, 
Uh, bishop c6 seems seem to be the best move, and after bishop takes, knight takes. And I think white is better. There's no doubt that white is still better. Uh, but it's it's getting tricky. It's getting tricky. I think I think I would rather be white here despite losing the exchange. But as soon as he grabs the exchange, I win another pawn. So he's basically left with a one pawn against four on the queen side, which is more than ample compensation for the exchange. But after fe5, he played rook g6, and now he has no more time to do that. Um, I did mess up slightly, uh, but I still got a winning position out of this. I played rook f2 straight away, defending. Uh, it was much better to play g3, and after queen d4, I'm si simply not giving up the exchange because I play bishop e3, and, and that's it. Uh, I mean, after queen e5, I go queen f2 and everything's defended. I went rook f2, and now here's the problem. After uh, after uh, queen to d4, uh, once I played queen to e3, uh, he takes on e5, and I didn't see... Yeah, okay, uh, I didn't see the best move. But I saw, and, and that's the reason why I played queen e3, but I saw a way to trick him and he fell for the trap. I should say that the best move is simply knight to e2, preventing bishop to d4. And after queen takes a4, queen takes e5, maybe queen c2, just rook e1, and basically I'm going to be playing knight f4 if he takes the bishop. So let's say queen takes bishop, knight f4, and I'm, I'm just winning. Uh, I didn't see knight e2. Instead of that, I played rook e1, which I thought was good enough. And here's what happened. So this is a forced line which uh, we'd both calculated. So f4 attacks my queen, I have to trade. Queen d4, bishop d4, again attacking the exchange. Knight e4, again attacking uh, the knight on a5. But after bishop takes f2, he, he did not find bishop c6 in that line. After bishop takes f2, king f2, he's basically losing a piece. Uh, what he'd overlooked after knight c6 is that I can simply take on c5, attacking the bishop, and if the bishop retreats, it's mate. So he's, he's down a piece. He played knight a5 and I took it, and that's it. After king takes f2, what he could do to save himself instead of knight c6 or to try and save himself, is bishop takes e4. But after rook e4, knight b7, I'm basically still just winning after rook e4, because I have two extra pawns, two bishops, which are... I mean, I know the engine evaluation for this position, because I've analyzed the game ten times. It gives white plus two and a half. I wouldn't go that far for human players, but white should be better. The bishops are just amazing, and the pawn majority as well. But yeah, in the game he played knight c6, and now it's just over. Bishop, uh, knight takes c5, knight a5, bishop takes knight, rook g2. He gets some compensation, but it's not nearly enough for a piece. Okay, king f1, uh, bishop to f3, trying to stir up some trouble, but I'm basically too much material up. I have a knight and bishop and pawn for a rook, that's two points up. I played knight e4, uh, rook takes h2, knight g5, and this is the idea I had. Uh, I played knight e4 and then knight g5 to evict the bishop from my position. After bishop d5, I simply dropped back. Now the bishop is out of play, now I can never get mated, everything is defended. Uh, of course, he cannot take on a2, because I will just trade off some more pieces. Uh, so yeah, rook f8 played. King g1, attacking the rook, rook h4, evicting the rook as well. Bishop to d7, guarding the h3 square. f3, bishop b6, uh, preparing to blockade on f2 with either piece. Rook h6, bishop d4, rook g6, check king f1. It, there's basically no attack, There's there are basically no threats. It was a fairly simple position from here on. Knight f2 blockading, no trouble. As soon as the f-pawn moves, I can start fearing something, but if it doesn't move, then he can never connect connect his pieces. And now I'm threatening rook e8 check, winning the h5 pawn. 
uh, or yeah, or basically winning the h5 pawn. So he played rook d8, rook e8 check takes, bishop takes. If he plays rook h6, I have bishop e3, and on rook h7, I simply have bishop to g6, winning the exchange. Uh, yeah, in, instead of that, I played c4 first uh, and chased the bishop away, and after bishop e6, I played bishop e3. Uh, yeah, of course, rook h7 loses the exchange, so he played rook f6, I just took the pawn and now this is very very simple. Uh, he basically has no more counterplay without his h pawn. He's never going to queen the g pawn, and my pawn majority is just rolling uh, towards queening. So this is how the game ended. Uh, queening my c pawn, queening my c pawn, still queening my c pawn. I mean this is just trivial. There's basically nothing left for for him to do and here he resigned uh, it's obviously too much so coming back to the opening no one seems to be prepared for 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 queen f3 on lower levels or at least on my level uh, it's a very tricky move if you play the italian and if you if you go knight f6 you have to be prepared for this it's, it's a very tricky opening i mean i don't know nearly enough to be able to play it confidently but so far, two games, two wins. So I'm happy. Anyway, uh, wish me luck for tomorrow, guys. Uh, first round starts at 3 p.m. Cross your fingers that they do well. And yeah, see you, see you with another game soon. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for my chess.